Hi, I'm Jeff Grant, uh, co-owner and founder of DraftWorks Brewery here in Missoula, Montana. Uh, we've been open almost six years. We opened in October of 2011. Uh, we now have a, basically a full production site right here, uh, tasting room included, that you can see behind me. Uh, we can four different brands on site. Uh, we distribute kegs to Western Montana bars and restaurants. Uh, and we have, the, in this tasting room, we always have 13 beers on tap with a constant rotating seasonal list. 2014, we won a uh, very small brewery of the year at the Great American Beer Festival. Um, our IPA is our, our number one seller. It's a Scepter IPA. Um, my uh, partner, Paul Marshall, and I are both Montana natives. I happen to also be a second generation brewer in the state of Montana. My parents owned a very small brewery in eastern Montana, so it was my upbringing growing up. And we have an awesome production staff here of about eight to 10. Um, our brewers all have a formal brewing education, so really grasp the science of making beer, but they definitely uh, enjoy the creative artistic side as well. Um, hope you guys enjoy the tour. As I speak, we're getting our grain silo filled uh, with malted barley. That's all the grain that we'll be using in the brewing process. The malted barley is getting pumped in from the truck, and this is out of Malt Europe in Great Falls, Montana. As a brewery in Montana, we're really fortunate because most of the barley that's in that truck and then in the silo is grown right here in the state of Montana and then malted at a facility out of Great Falls. We get this silo filled about once a month and that silo will hold about 25,000 pounds of malted barley. This is really the beginning of the brewing process for us as all that grain getting pumped into the silo is where we'll get our sugars, color, and flavor from the barley. So I'm in the mill room here at DraftWorks and this is our mill. So we just saw the silo outside where all of our two row malted barley is. All of that malted barley will end up going through the mill and getting cracked. And the importance of cracking the kernel of grain is so that we can extract out as much sugars, color, flavor, and aroma from the grain. This is also where we add specialty malts. So we can add really dark grains like roasted barley. We can add lighter grains like caramel malt. And these give beers different character. It's what makes a stout look like a stout and have a roasty flavor. It's what can give an IPA kind of a caramel flavor. This is really where we start to build the beer and develop different types of styles of beer depending on the different specialty grains that we use. All right, this is our 15 barrel JV Northwest brew house. It is a combi system, meaning it is two vessels. Each one at, uh, operates for multiple purposes. We have the mash tun combined with the hot liquor tank, as well as the brew kettle and the whirlpool. What we do is we bring in milled malted barley along with other adjuncts to create different grain bills. As the milled malt and the water combine, it creates a specific temperature range activating enzymes inside that malt that will convert starches to sugars. We use a very specific temperature range to create the flavor and fermentation profile that we're looking for for each beer. Once we've converted those starches to sugars, we then need to use that same vessel as a separation vessel. What that means is the husk of the grain creates a natural filter bed where we pull the sweet wort off the bottom and recirculate it back up on top until that wort runs clear. At that point, the wort's ready to be separated from the mash tun into the brew kettle. That process is called loudering. In the brew kettle here, we louder the sweet wort over until we've collected enough volume to begin our boil. When we then turn on the steam jackets calling for on-demand steam, bringing that liquid volume up to temperature, allowing us to do several very important key things to the wort. It sterilizes the wort, it drives off volatile uh, aromatic compounds that are not um, desirable in the beer. It allows us to add hops imparting bitterness 
through the isomerization of alpha acids. What that means is we add hops and the boil breaks down those resins into perceptible bitterness for the beer. Um, it also precipitates proteins out that are unwanted in the boil and it allows us to concentrate the work, increasing our sugar content. At the end of the boil, we perform what's called a whirlpool on the same vessel. What that means is we pull the wort off and pump it back in at a tangential flow. What that does is it throws the precipitated proteins and organic matter to the outside of the kettle where they fall down and condense in the center bottom of the brew kettle. It also gives us another step to add more hops for flavor and aroma, preserving the essential oils that may be um, beneficial to the flavor and aroma of the beer. Following the whirlpool of the boiled wort, we are ready to knock out into a fermenter. The wort at this point is still above 200 degrees and would kill any yeast cells that it came in contact with. So it's crucial that we chill that wort down to fermentation temperature. The way we do that is through a heat exchanger. It's a series of stainless steel plates with cold city water and refrigerated glycol running on one side with hot wort running against the other side. A series of these plates together create a very efficient heat exchange, allowing us to go from 200 plus degrees to fermentation temperature, somewhere around 70 degrees Fahrenheit at a rate of about 20 gallons per minute. Once we pump the hot wort through the heat exchanger, we then send it via hard and soft piping to the fermenters. This fermenter holds three brews from the brew house or 45 barrels of beer. What we do at this point is we introduce the cooled wort with yeast, thus beginning fermentation. This is the beginning of the part of the point where we start to allow the yeast to create ethanol, carbon dioxide, and other flavor components. What that means is over the course of roughly two weeks on average for our ale strains, we are allowing the yeast to ferment, and at that point, we take the wort and the yeast create beer. This is a three square meter DE filter. DE stands for diatomaceous earth. It's uh, they're microscopic fossilized sea creatures. We don't actually use diatomaceous earth because it's a health hazard. Instead, we use perlite, which is an extruded volcanic rock product. Uh, and what we do is we run the beer into the filter and inside this bell are horizontal plates with a fine mesh screen. The beer travels through the screen and as it filters that perlite builds up and creates a filtration bed and it removes the yeast, hops and protein from the beer. The reason we filter the beer is to first of all make the cleanest, brightest and clearest product we can but also because each of those uh, byproducts, the yeast, hops and protein will continue to change the beer over, the t over time as they are organic materials. So by filtering the beer, we're able to extend the shelf life and make sure that it's still good by the time it reaches the customer. So all of these barrels here are filled with our spent grain. Uh, the spent grain is the malted barley that we've already brewed with. So in the mashing and mash tun process, we've extracted and stripped out the colors, flavors, aromas, and very importantly, the sugars out of the malted barley. And those are the sugars that the yeast will consume and turn into alcohol. Um, but with this grain, we don't wanna throw it away. So since our beginning almost six years ago, um, we've been hooked up with Tucker Family Farms right outside of Missoula. And they have a sheep dairy and they make cheese out of the sheep milk. So he picks up our grain a few times a week feeds it to a sheep and then they turn that milk into cheese. So our grain is, has a kind of a cyclical full circle of life thing. And the, the malted barley is grown in the state of Montana. It's malted in the state of Montana. We brew with it at Draftworks in Montana. It ends up on a sheep farm in here in Montana and is turned into cheese. So a very cool use all the way around with our malted barley. So this is our lab area. This is where we take samples from various points in the brew production process to test for the presence of beer spoiling microbes, as well as to confirm the presence of microbes that we want to see in our brews, such as house yeast. We isolate 
microbes using a variety of techniques, including selective and differential medias, such as HLP, uh, WLN, and spread plating and pore plating techniques. And then we will subsequently follow up and attempt to identify those microbes with techniques like gram staining or catalase testing. So this is a bright tank that has just been filled via the filter. The beer came out of a fermenter through the filter where the yeast, other particulates were taken out, and now the bright tank is full. We can now carbonate inside of this so the beer goes into the bright tank flat and then we carbonate it. The bright tank is the vessel where we can package off of it. So we can go into kegs, cans, bottles, um, direct to the tap at the tasting room if we'd like, but it really is a holding tank for the purpose of packaging beer. So this is our keg cleaning area. It's kind of the beginning of the packaging process. Just like all of our tanks, hoses, and everything that the product touches, we clean it very, very well, clean and sanitize. These are all the dirty kegs that come back from bars and restaurants. And then we bring them over to this staging area where they get hooked up to the keg cleaner. We really need to make sure that the kegs are clean. This is kind of the last phase that the beer touches. And so it's very crucial that these kegs are perfectly cleaned and sanitized. This is a multi-step keg cleaning process. It does a very hot wash and then a sanitizing system as well, so that when the kegs come off of this system, they are 100% ready to be filled. Throughout the packaging process, we take extensive steps to provide the largest shelf life possible for our beer. The primary ways we do that are minimizing oxygen ingress and keeping the beer cold, and uh, minimizing any oxygen ingress into the package. Temperature, high temperature, and oxygen are the two main catalysts for accelerated beer staling. So the way we measure dissolved oxygen is a multi-step process from the bright tank, pre and post filtration, at the canning line, and with equilibrated total package oxygen. We use an Anton Parr Seabox QC to do that. It also measures our volumes of carbonation in CO2. So uh, here at DraftWorks we get all of our empty cans delivered as you can see around us. Uh, we put them in the depalletizer there. From there they go onto a conveyor belt where they are rinsed and sanitized. Uh, from there they go into the filling machine where they get another uh, purge of CO2 in the inside of the can. And then uh, at that point the beer is filled inside of them. Once it passes out of the filling um, it gets a seam or a cap. and. Um, Basically the cans get rinsed off. They make sure that they're at the correct fill height. And once they pass that inspection, then they go to uh, the packaging machine, which is a six ring packager um, or four ring packager, depending on the variety of beer that we can. Uh, today is my Ruka, and um, that's about uh, 45 barrels worth in around two and a half hours we're gonna do today. Hope you guys enjoyed our tour. If you're in Missoula, make sure to check out Draftworks Brewery at 915 Tool Avenue. Um, enjoy our tasting room, and the whole production site is right on your lap while you're enjoying a beer in the tasting room. Uh, to discover any of the various beers we have on tap, be sure to check out the other videos.